Hi everyone, and thanks for joining me for another Embroidery for Beginners video. Today we're going to be focusing on snap tabs. This is a very easy, very beginner friendly project. And these are a lot of fun to make. This is something that caught my eye before I started embroidering and I knew I wanted to be able to make some. I'm making all of these in today's video on my SE 1900 single needle machine so that you can get an idea. This works exactly like the Brother PE machines. Um, the embroidery module is exactly the same. So I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to make these snap tabs and I'm going to give you a tip on a great place to get over 280, almost 300 snap tabs uh, for very little cost just to give you something to practice on. And not only that, um, I'm going to show you Creative Fabrica. They have not only snap taps, but tons and tons of embroidery files as well as graphics. So let's take a look over there before we get started and then we're going to make the snap tab. So here we are at creativefabrica.com and I'm just showing you this because once you sign up as a monthly member and you can sign up for one month and then cancel or you can sign up and it'll just continuously renew each month. It's a monthly subscription. I am a subscriber and they not only have tons of SVGs and fonts and graphics, but they have embroidery files. So I have just went on the website and I put in the search bar embroidery snap tabs and there are over 281, 84 results, I think that says. So here's just a look at some of the snap tabs that are available on Creative Fabrica. And these aren't the only embroidery files. These are just the snap tabs. So again, one month, and I, there are different subscription plans. I'm on the $29.99. But for one month, I have access to over 280 some snap tabs and all of their other embroidery files and all of their fonts and all of their graphics. So even if you only do it for one month or three months, you have a suddenly a huge library of things that you can stitch out or play with, practice on. Um, again, they have graphics. If you have a Cricut or a Silhouette or a Cameo, they have SVG files. If you have um, any kind of graphic software, again, the Cricut Silhouette, Glowforge, all of those that can use fonts. They have tons of fonts and you only pay your monthly subscription and then you can download whatever you want as much as you want for that entire month. So it, to me, it's a fun subscription and I, every time I need something, I check here first because I'm already paying the monthly subscription fee and I can download as much as I want. So I went in here and just found a couple of snap tabs that we're going to create. So I settled on this panda and I'm going to walk you through step by step how to get this from the wherever, whatever website you're downloading your snap tab from to your machine. So you're just going to click at this case, you're going to click download some websites. You're going to have to purchase it and go through that process, but then you're going to get to your download screen. When I download, it drops right here to my lower left corner and it's a zip file. So I just hit show in finder and then I double click it. You've got to open that zip file. And inside that file is another file. So I'm going to double click it again. And here we're looking for the file that ends in whatever your machine is. I'm going to stitch this one on my SE 1900 brother machine. So we need to look for the file that ends in PES. Once I see that, I'm going to right click and click copy. And then I'm going to go over to my flash drive, which I have hooked into my computer. And I'm going to right click on that flash drive and click paste. So that's going to copy that file that ended in PES right into my flash drive. So now it's on there ready to go to my machine. So you want to make sure that you get the right file, the one that ends in your format for your machine. If you have a Janome, it's going to be the file that ends in JEF. If you have a Recoma, it's going to be the file that ends in DST. If you have a brother, it's going to be the PES file. You're also going to notice inside this file, there are three different versions of the same file. So there's an eyelet version, a ribbon version, and the snap tab version. So you want to make sure that you get the one that you want um, on this particular one. There's usually no matter who does it, they usually give you an eyelet version and a snap tab version. And that's just for those of you that have four by four machines. Sometimes the snap tab doesn't fit, 
but I'm gonna go ahead and copy all three versions to my flash drive. And once I have that done, here's you can see what the three different versions are. If you click right here, there's the snap tab on the left, the middle is the eyelet version, and the right side is the ribbon version. Um, sometimes I like to click down here and just see if there's any notes. A lot of times they'll include a PDF and this one has a PDF right here. So let's click on that and see what's included here. And I believe this is our instructions. So yes, this is the page by page illustrated instructions and this is your color sheets. I call them cheat sheets and they've got, looks like one set for each type. So I'm going to go ahead and print those and then let's go over to the machine. So here we are at the SE 1900. The first thing you're going to do is turn it on. I'm going to walk you through step by step. I've hooked my flash drive up to the machine. There is a USB drive. Let me turn you a little bit. So there's a USB drive right here or a USB port. I just have an extension cable. I'll link that in the description below the video. It just saves the wear and tear on this port. So if this goes bad from the USB going in and out, I only have to replace this cord instead of having to replace that port. But if you don't have that yet, don't worry about it. Go ahead and put your USB drive in the machine. All right, so we're going to, let me turn this around. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the, the screen. And it's going to tell you every time that this carriage is going to move. You just click OK, and that's just telling you that this is going to move. Keep your hands out of the way. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go into our USB drive and get our design. So we're going to click on this button right here. And here is our snap tab that we're going to do. Remember, I put the eyelet one and the ribbon one. This is the snap tab one. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to click set. All right, so it is centered in the design. It knows that I have my five by seven hoop in. I have a choice right here. That's my five by seven hoop. That's a four by four hoop. We're using the five by seven that comes with your machine. I have hooped a piece of tear weight. Now this is a piece that's already got one stitch on it that I had for another project and then I didn't end up using it. So I'm just reusing it. Um, it's still hooped, so I just thought this will work fine. This is just a piece of tearaway a stabilizer, and I will link that in the description below the video. Okay, before we put the hoop on, I need to change my thread. So, last project I used this, I'm going to move you up here. The last project I used this orange thread. When you are changing your thread, clip it up here, and then pull it out down here. Don't clip it up here and pull it out the top. You always want to pull it during through the natural thread path. All right, so we're going to take that one off. Now I'm going to go over here to my directions and it's going to, we're going to find the one that we're doing. Oops, I think I left them over here. So we're doing the snap tab version. There are several different instructions in here. So there's the eyelet version. There's the ribbon version. So I've pulled out the snap tab version. So it's telling us the very first thing it's going to do is the placement stitch. This is the actual recipe here. So the very first one is the placement stitch. So I'm going to do that. Let's see, just kind of looking through to see what it's going to do first. It's like white's going to be our first color. So I'm going to do my placement stitch in white and then this one's going to be in white and then this one is going to be the white part of the panda. So you just have to kind of look at the directions. This is your actual recipe card. These are the colors they recommend. So they start with gray, but that's just a placement stitch. You're not going to see it. So I'm just going to use my white so I don't have to change it again. And then the tack down stitch. Again, they have black. I'm just going to use the white again. That's just holding the vinyl onto the fabric or onto the, the tearaway. And then white's gonna be the very first embellishment, which will be this part, all right? So again, you have to kind of work in tandem, looking at your two different directions. This is the step-by-step. -step. So the first color we need to put in is white. So we're gonna go ahead and thread the white on. I'll put the white on. 
I'm gonna put the little thread carrier over it. Okay, so now we're going to thread the machine. Everything is numbered. There's one, two, three, four, five, and the number's actually on the machine. So you're gonna go through one, around, following the arrow, up, your presser foot is up at this point. You're gonna go down, around number three, up to four and around, down to five. And then there's a number six way under here, that little silver tab. All right, once you got it through number six, you're gonna go up to number seven. You're gonna take it over to the side. There's a thread cutter. I'm just gonna hang it over there. We're gonna put the presser foot down. And then we're going to push the button to thread it. And just like that, it's threaded. All right. And then I take the, put the presser foot back up and take the tail and just stick it back through that hole. You don't have to do that, but I like to do that. It saves you some looping. And I already have my white bobbin in. All right. So let's put our hoop in. Slide it under, and then there's just two little clips right here. I'm just going to stick it into those clips, make sure that it engages, it's hooked. We're going to put the presser foot down, and we're going to hit end edit, embroidery. All right, so now we're going to click OK. It's telling us five minutes for this entire project right here. There's six steps. Click start. Let's move the camera over here. All right, so it finished our placement stitch. So I'm gonna take it off of the machine. I'm gonna put my presser foot up. Pop it off the machine. And you can see the placement stitch right there. So now what we need to do is put our vinyl on top of it so that it covers. And I'm just gonna use some tape and tape it into place. Just want to make sure that that entire design is covered up. I'm going to pop it back on the machine. And just about every snap tap works very similarly. All right, so now we've got that done. We're going to put the presser foot down. I'm going to start stitching. Let it go just a couple stitches. I'm going to stop. I'm going to trim that thread just to get it out of my way. All right, let's finish step number two. Let's take a look at that. You don't need to take it off of your machine, but I want to show you. So that is what's referred to as your tack down, meaning it tacked this material down to your project. So that's the tack down. Let's put it back on. All right, so if we look at our steps, the machine is telling us that we are on step number three. So we had the placement, tack down. And so number three is going to be the white design part, the white element part. So we're gonna put the presser foot down and go ahead and stitch that out.
screen is telling us that this stuff is going to take three minutes. The screen also tells us what color is next. So pink's going to be our next color. Got that ready. So we've stitched our white stitch. The screen tells us pink is next. So we're going to, again, cut our thread. All right, once that stitch is finished, we're going to, the screen's telling us pink is next. So we're going to cut our thread. Again, cut it up high. We're gonna pull this up, pull the thread out. Put our pink thread on. Make sure when you put your thread on that the tail is coming over the top and not stuck underneath. That'll cause you some thread breaks. So again, we're just gonna follow the numbers. One, two, around to three, up and around, catch four, through five, number six. I don't know why I always have trouble getting it in six. Six, up to seven, Go to the thread break or th thread cutter and put the presser foot down, thread. We're threaded. I'm gonna put the presser foot up. I'm gonna stick the tail through the hole. I'm just gonna hold this tail lightly go ahead and start the next stitch which is our step number five let it do a couple stitches oh it says check and re-thread the upper thread so something's didn't catch so let's go ahead and do a thread cut the presser foot. I'm going to trim my thread. And let's... Oh, I see it snagged right there. All right, again, I'm going to cut it up here. Pull it out. We'll try it again. So I'm just something didn't catch or didn't miss or it was snagged. Again, make sure we hit every number. One, two, three, four, five. Press your foot down. Slightly holding this tail. And start it again. Hit OK. All right, we're ready for our final stitch, but before we do that, we're gonna put the backing on our snap tab. Now you don't have to put a backing on it, but most people prefer that. So I'm gonna release it from the machine. I'm gonna turn it over. This is the back of the hoop. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this out of our way just so it doesn't end up sticking out. All right, and I want to take a piece of felt and I'm just going to stick that right over those stitches just like I did the vinyl. I'm going to tape that into place. All right, before we put that on the machine, let's go ahead and switch to our black thread. So now we're doing the final stitch. It calls for black on the machine. I should have changed that to white since I did my placement in white, 
but you can do whatever color you want. I'm just going to go ahead and let it run the black over the white. So we are finished. We can just click OK. We can take this out and put your foot up. Just want to show you the finished design. You do have these jump stitches. You need to trim those away. So I like to do it before I take it out of the hoop. Just in case there's anything I want to redo, it's still in the original position. So I'm going to trim up all these jump stitches. Just so you know, I ended up putting the white thread in and rerunning that last stitch. I just didn't like the way the black looked. So the finished product does have the white border around the edge. Um, it just stands out a little bit more. These two holes are where our snaps are going to go. You've also got jump stitches on the back. You want to trim those up. And again, I prefer to leave it in the hoop while I do all this cleanup just in case I decide I need to change something, fix something. All right, once you're satisfied with it, you can go ahead and remove it from the hoop. And you can see here, this is why I don't like to remove it from the hoop until I have totally looked at it. This is me rerunning it with the white thread for that last stitch just to make it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. But had I removed it from my hoop before, I wouldn't have been able to line that back up. But you can see I was easily able to just put it in and rerun that last step with a different colored thread. All right, so we've got the snap tab all done. We're going to take it out of the hoop. Just like so. You're going to want some sharp scissors. We're going to remove our tape. I usually just stick it on the edge of my table for the next project or budget, whatever. All right, and what I like to do is remove the excess tear away. Just be careful. It doesn't want to tear, especially this one because I've got stitches in it. Just give it a little snip. There we go. So we've got them all cleaned up. What I recommend is some really sharp scissors. And you just want to trim about an eighth of an inch away. You can see that. We can get something white behind it. So I'm trimming about an eighth of an inch away from the stitch lines. The less that you open and close your scissors, the smoother your cuts are going to look. And it's up to you how detailed you want to get. You can go around every curve or you can just kind of round it out. 100% up to you and the look that you like. Helps to keep your scissors straight and move the project. I'm the world's worst cutter. And I think it's because I grew up a grew up and I still am a lefty, obviously, but I grew up using right-handed scissors. And so it's never been my dominant hand, but that's how I cut. And I've never been the world's neatest cutter. I find it's always better to leave a little bit more and then go back and trim. All right, so we've got him all cut out. That's what he looks like on the back. That's what he looks like on the front. 
We've got our two places for our holes. We're going to just use the standard cam snaps. I think that's readily available to most people. And we'll get this guy finished up. So here's our little snap tab. We need to add our snaps. I'm using the cam snap system. This is really inexpensive to get this little kit. You get all sorts of colors of snaps and all the tools you need to make a lot of these. And yes, I have the upgraded system, but this is perfect for getting started. So you're going to get this all with it. You're just gonna poke a hole right in the center of your circles, just like that through both layers. Same here. Just like that. All right, so now let's pick out a color of a snap tab. I think we'll do pink. So for every set of snaps that you put in, you're going to need two pieces that look like a tack. And then there's male and female backs in here. Let's get what we need. So you see that? So these two pieces are exactly the same. And then this is a female end, that's the male end. You just need two of these tacks and one of each of these for every snap tab. All right, so what do we do with this? I'm gonna put those down. We've got our snap tab. So we're gonna take one of our tack pieces and just stick that through this bottom one. So it sticks through just like that. You see that? Everybody push it through a little bit more. So there's our snap tab. Or our, there's our snap sticking through. Then you just take one of your backs. It doesn't matter which. I'm going to use the female one that looks like this. And you put it so the indent looks like that. Then you're going to take these pliers and these come with the kit. You're going to take the black side of the pliers and put that against this flat side of the snap. Just hold it in there and then you need to squeeze. And there you have the first snap in place. All right. Now we're going to take the second tack piece and put it in the top hole. Just like that. We're going to take this piece, oops, this piece in this direction and put it on top of that tab. So the, the male piece, it looks like that on the side, is going to be facing you. And again, you're going to take the black part against the tack, squeeze, and there is your snap tab. So you've got a few options. You can just take one of these rings. It's just a, like a split key ring. And you can just snap that in there like that. Or you could put this in there. To work it around there. like that. Or you could put any kind of clip or circle that you wanted to around there. You could just clip this on to something if you have a ring already on your backpack or something like that. Super, super easy. So that's how you create a basic snap tab. They're all about the same. You put the back on before the very last step. You add your snaps. You usually have your first stitch put your fabric down on the top and then you do all the detail stitching. Here is an eyelet version. This is the one that I put on Evie's Halloween bag. Again, this one came from Creative Fabrica as well. And then I did a bat version on Aces. Made exactly the same way, except this is the eyelet version. So instead of the snap tab, it just makes a little circle here and you insert an eyelet. So super easy to make fun, personalized snap tabs.